Welcome back to another lightsaber build. Today we're going to be building the KR Sabers Desert Wanderer with an Eco Crystal Chamber. Let's start by going over the parts. Of course you're going to need the Eco Crystal Chamber chassis by Gothry Designs, and then you're going to need the NeoPixel connectors for the emitter and neck section. The ones that came with the kit are the Eco versions, but of course you can replace them with the more advanced V3s. Next you're going to need the two NeoPixel accents and the crystals for the crystal chamber, along with your standard 18650 lithium ion battery, battery tabs, the button PCB that comes with the hilt, the power switch, and of course, the soundboard. We're going to be using Profi for this one. And then we're using a 28mm bass speaker. Lastly, this chassis is going to be using a 4mm diameter brass tube and a 1.5mm brass rod. Now it's time to build this thing. I think I'll start off this build by cutting the brass tube and rod to size. For the measurements and stuff, I'm going to refer to this guide that the chassis maker made. So let's get to work on cutting the rods into 4 parts. With the first one done, I can use it to measure out the others better. Even if it's not exact, it still works. Now that we have four roughly 60mm rods, we can cut the two 44mm tubes. With the tubes and rods ready to go, we can work on the crystal chamber. I had to spend some time making the holes a little bit wider so that everything could fit. After finishing that, I decided to try putting everything together. Looks like it all fits perfectly, so I decided to move on to the next step of adding the crystals. During this, I found out that if you push in both crystals all the way, they actually overlap too much, so I decided to try and space it a bit. So it looks much better when I don't push one of them in all the way, but it does leave some extra material at the top. So to fix that problem, I just sanded it down so that everything fits. And with that, the chassis and crystal chamber preparations have been completed. This was probably the most straightforward chassis prep I've had for a crystal chamber saver. Now it's time to install the electronics. I'm going to begin with the bottom half of the chassis, which includes the battery tabs, power switch, and speaker. The crystal chamber section I'm going to put aside and save for later. Starting with the battery tabs, I cut off the extra bits of metal to allow them to fit into the chassis, and now I just have to attach the wires. Now I have both tabs in their place in the chassis, I'll be gluing them down later, but for now, we're going to move on to the next part, the power switch. Now I just have to push it in place and make sure I can still use it. So far so good! Now that we have the battery tabs and the power switch in place, we can move on to the next part, the speaker. I decided to use a 28mm bass speaker from Smuggler's Outpost. Now that that's done, let's see what it looks like in the chassis. With all the space above the speaker, I bet this thing's gonna be really loud. I can't wait to hear it. After gluing in the speaker, the bottom half of the chassis is pretty much completed. The next parts I'm going to be adding are the activation and auxiliary switches. I'm going to mention it here, but at the end of the build when I was testing everything out, I actually had some trouble with the switches catching the lip of the hilt and then breaking off. I ended up having to replace the buttons quite a few times, but in the end I did manage to get everything working perfectly. So if any of you are making this for yourselves, make sure your glue doesn't raise the switches at all. But with that, I'm going to be moving on to installing the crystal chamber section with the NeoPixel accents. If you haven't noticed by now, I like to pre-solder all my pads before I solder on all the wires, it just makes it easier. And I'm soldering 6 wires to one of these NeoPixel accents since I'm going to be connecting both of these pixels together. I ended up having to sand the chassis some more so I could fit the pixels in. And after soldering the two pixels together, we now have a crystal chamber with two light up crystals. Next up are the NeoPixel connectors. So since this is the Eco version, it doesn't have as many options as the NeoPixel connectors I normally use, so no blade detection and no second data line. That means setting it up is going to be very straightforward. Two 24 gauge negative wires and one 30 gauge data line. The positive wire we're going to be attaching after the NeoPixel connector goes into the crystal chamber. With the connector in place and the wires routed through the bottom, we can now move on to attaching the crystal chamber to the main part of the chassis. That involves setting up the resistor for the data line on the accent pixels and attaching the positive wires of the pixels into the one main positive wire. Now that I have all the main parts in their place in the chassis, we can move on to the soundboard. Normally I like to use a crystal focus soundboard, but this eco crystal chamber can only take a profi, which is kind of nice. A profi is a bit more fun to solder to. 
And with that, the entire crystal chamber chassis has been completed. I still have the emitter and neck section to do, but for now, let's test to see if this works. Hello there. It works great! The crystals are lighting up exactly how I wanted them to, the NeoPixel connector works, and the buttons are working. And on top of that, the speaker is insanely loud, more than any of my savers. Now that I know it works, I have to set up the emitter and neck section, which means I have to take some things apart. With the hilt now in pieces, I can work on installing the electronics in the neck section. We're going to be using this eco hilt side connector for the emitter, and to allow for the removable chassis, we're going to use this blade side connector for the underside of the neck. I'm attaching the wires to the blade side connector first, because I won't have access to it later once everything is in place. As you can see, when it's in place, I have no way of reaching it. There is this hole, but that's going to be covered up by the next section in the emitter. So this is the part of the emitter that houses the NeoPixel connector. Inside of this, we put the NeoPixel connector holder to keep it in place. After pre-soldering the pads, I can now attach the wires a lot easier. Now that the two connectors are attached to each other, here comes the stressful part. I now have to deal with this excess wire, which involves me screwing everything in place very slowly in order not to break any connections. After screwing it all in and hoping nothing broke, it's time to test the lightsaber. Wow, that is incredible now. And the light's coming out of the emitter, so it looks like this is working perfectly. Now all that's left to test is to see if the blade works. So let's replace the display emitter with the blade retention emitter. And with that, we can almost call this lightsaber complete. There are two more little additions I want to add first. So the first of two additions I'm going to be making to this lightsaber is going to be to the blade plug. As you can see, the pins and LEDs are visible on the NeoPix connector through the blade plug, which doesn't necessarily look bad, I just think it's a bit weird. Usually with these things I have to design and print something to make it the way I want it, but luckily the makers of this kit provided exactly what I was looking for. This little plastic circle just snaps in place, you don't even need to use any glue. And if it does its job correctly, once we put the blade plug back into the hilt, and we turn the lightsaber on, the light coming from the LEDs of the blade connector should be a lot more diffused. And would you look at that! Instead of being able to see the NeoPixel connector underneath the blade plug, now it's just one solid block of light. The final addition to this lightsaber project will be to help guide the chassis into the hilt. So I'm going to add these two long screws under the clamp card. Here's a look at the two screws side by side. The shorter one was the one we just took out. And with that, the two guiding screws are now in place. I'll give you guys a look inside so you can see how it works. Here you can see the two screws we added just poking out a little bit right at the top. So we just line those up with the channel in the chassis and it'll just slide right in. Now no matter what, the chassis is going to be oriented the correct way and is protected from any kind of shifting. Now I just have to reconstruct the control box. Once this clamp card is stuck back in place, I can finally call this lightsaber project completed. Next up, I think it's time to show off a little bit. Here's the crystal chamber in different colors based on what sound font is selected. These beginning ones are Obi-Wan based, so they're all blue. And with that, we've cycled through all the sound fonts I set up, 
which means I can now call this lightsaber officially complete. Let's put this crystal chamber into the lightsaber hilt and enjoy the rest of this video with everything working together. Thank you all so much for watching and sticking around to the very end of this build. I hope you've enjoyed seeing this project come to life and look forward to my future builds.